it. Oh, we're on air. We're, we're running. Oh, whoa. All right, all right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. How do you pronounce your name? It's Venetia. Venetia, good to see yes. you. Welcome. Thank you. And Where thank you? you for responding. I was so nervous. Like, I don't want to miss this. Is like literally my first time. Oh, so good. thank you. Oh, girl, please. No, my pleasure. Where do you live, Venetia? Um, Columbus, Georgia. Oh, you're in Columbus. Nice, yes. nice, nice. And how did you find out about us? For Willie Moore Jr. Oh, from um, his Moore radio Jr. show. And so then I started to follow you on Instagram and okay. hook from there. Okay, good. We are so excited that you are here with us this evening. So thank you. Girl, we were all sidetracked, um, digressed. We were talking about something completely different. So we just getting started. You, you just oh, popped in at the right time. We haven't talked about a thing yet. Good deal. Mm -hmm. So I am going to get started now um, because we are actually live right now. We're live, but this is also going to be published within the Thank Me Later community. So folks can take a look at this at their leisure later. And um, of course, I'm Janai Thornton, and I'm super excited to have Carol Jones from State Farm with me, Carol, and then Tiana, who is our um, Thank Me Later community manager, who is down there with us as well. And again, y'all, I cannot believe it is October. What in the world is going on? Honey, this is the last quarter. It's going to be Christmas in like three weeks. So just hold on. You know it's coming quick. You know when October comes, it's when, once Halloween gets here, it's just like all downhill from it. Absolutely. It's going to be going quick. But I'm super excited about October because um, our entire month, our focus is on insurance. So we are just rolling off of September, which was all about financial aid and scholarships. That was an amazing month. October is all about insurance. So we're going to be covering, um, I have to admit, and I do, I feel like a, a little bit of a nerd. This is one of my favorite months. Um, maybe just because I'm, I'm a little naturally paranoid. Um, insurance is one of my favorite topics. So we're doing all things PNC, property and casualty. So we're going to be talking about homeowners. We're going to be homeowners and renters, auto. Then we're going to add in, um, we're going to remix it a little bit, Carol, with some stuff that I think people don't know about. So this month okay. we're going to be talking about Umbrella, one of my faves. Uh, we're going to be talking about personal articles, insurance. Um, we're going to be talking about special events coverage, what a lot of people don't understand what that is. Right. So we're going to do that. We're going to cover life insurance. Um, I mean, we're covering it all this month. So all things benefits related. When you think about health insurance, disability insurance, and like all that stuff you primarily get through work or through your company, that's actually our focus for November. So it's not like it's not important, but open enrollment is starting in November. So we're going to table all of that until next month. So we're going to have some amazing programming around that. So before we get into... Um, Again, just kind of the highlight of what we're going over. Tiana, I'm going to ask you if you could just um, give the Thank Me Later Truth View community um, an idea of what our programming is for the month. I'm so excited about what we have for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Hey, everybody. All right. So we're kicking it off. Well, we're kicking it off tonight. So for those who might be new to the community, one, welcome. And then two, just to kind of give you an idea. So early at the beginning of each month, we have a kickoff call like this. It's a preview where Janai and the subject matter expert today, Carol, um, will give us an idea of what to expect for the month. And this is a great opportunity for you to come in, ask any initial questions that you have before we kick off our full programming. So that's what we're doing tonight. And our first event will be this Wednesday and it's called Prove It, how to show what you own to prepare for future insurance claims. So one of the things that I've learned that y'all might already know that you have to document what you own in case you have to file a claim in the future. And the lovely Carol Jones, who is a State Farm agent and owner, amazing for over 30 years right like amazing we have the best of the best subject matter experts here so she will be showing us how to do a home inventory 
session about how to recreate a video, how to capture what you own through photos, where to store that, all of that, so that you're just thanking yourself later that you did this. Um, and so that's going to be on Wednesday at 7. It will be on Instagram Live, and we also will share the link in the community. So that's our first event. And then on the 19th, we're going to do a follow-up with Carol. We're going to do an insurance policy review and then also talk about how you can save money on your insurance. And so this will be a great opportunity for you to learn bit by bit what goes into insurance, get a better understanding. And we really want you guys to download your auto policy, your homeowners, your renters insurance policy, because Carol will be going through that. And that'll be a great time for you to not just hear what she's saying, but really take advantage and, um, you know, go through line by line what's on your insurance policy. So that's our second event. And again, that's on Tuesday, October 19th at 7 p.m. And then we have two other, a few other sessions. We'll have an insurance, a uh, life insurance roundtable on Thursday, um, October 28th at 7 p.m. And that will be an opportunity for you to hear different perspectives um, about how people chose what life insurance plan that they have and just talking about the importance of life insurance. So those are our main uh, content and programming for October as it relates to insurance. And then we have two other uh, pieces of content for you guys to look out for. So um, if you guys have not checked out Tanya Mitchell Graham, she is an amazing family and law attorney. And so she did a session about divorce and child support. Um, you can search in the community for those terms to catch the replays. But we're going to do a follow up about child custody with Tanya. Um, so that will be released the week of October 18th. And then we're going to do a follow up from um, the August session, which was about legal documents. We brought in Tiffany McKenzie, um, who is an attorney and a state attorney. And she's going to do a follow up from the power of attorney and healthcare power of attorney session that we did in August, which you also can catch the replay in the community. She's going to do um, a follow up on. Let me get the date. Wednesday, October 27th. So that will be live in this OEA platform. We'll probably choose a different room, but that will be also an event that you definitely want to attend. We're going to be talking about wills and trust. So lots of great things going on in the community. And feel free to, in the community on the left-hand side, it's an events tab. You can RSVP for all of those events that are live um, in that section. I think that's and, it. Okay. And Tiana, the only thing that I wanted to add, just a couple of things. Um, number one, for the session we have on Tuesday, um, October the 19th with Carol, the policy review. If you're not a State Farm customer, that's fine. It doesn't matter who you're with. Um, All State, Liberty Mutual, Progressive, it does not matter. Geico, please make sure you download, print, your policies, because it's going to be really important that we can do a thorough review. All the questions you never asked, coverages, it doesn't matter. Um, it's all it's all comparable. You know, they all offer the exact same thing, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, again, um, please download those policies. And then Tiffany McKenzie on the will session. Um, any questions that you have, you know, setting your stuff up. So maybe something relates to your parents or your grandparents. Please, please, please take advantage of this level of access. Like who gets to ask questions to people at this level? So we definitely want you all to be prepared and get really engaged. And if you have any people who, um, women of course only, who aren't part of the community, but you think that would really benefit from this information, um, please have them go to thankmelater.money so they can join. That's the only way that they're going to be able to access our programming. Other than the Instagram session live that we're going to be doing with Carol Wednesday of this week, so excited about that. So thank you, Tiana, for that, sharing um, the programming. So um, there's a lot of work in the background that Tiana is leading for us. And um, we're just so happy. We're still essentially in beta mode, you know, still working out the kinks. But so grateful that you all are part of our community and engaging with us. But um, let us know what you need to talk about, what questions that you have, because we are certainly here to serve you. Okay.
Um, I'm, I'm hoping y'all are not the OEA like we are. Like, I know y'all are Zoomed to death, Lord. So we're like, oh, we got to find something um, a little bit more attractive. So um, there's some icons at the bottom that you can um, click on if you want to respond. And you can certainly drop some questions in the chat. There's only a few of us. So please feel free to, um, if you have any questions, because this session really is just to let you know about what we have coming up. Um, so Carol, because we're here, girl, I'm so happy that you're here. Um, I know I ask you this all of the time, but I'm thinking you and I probably have worked together. What do you think? Probably about 20 years, you think? Has it oh, more than 20 years. We're probably closer to about 25, 26 years oh, now. My girl, don't. Yeah, so it's been a really long time. Girl. It's been great. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe it's been that long. So Carol and I have worked together because, um, I know a lot of you all know me from media, but I'm actually an accountant. I'm a, I'm a CPA in the entertainment industry. And so um, several of our clients, I live in Atlanta. Some of our clients actually use Carol's State Farm office. Um, I do personally as well. And so le let me just give you a little background and then Carol, I'm going to toss it to you. So Carol, this is what I was thinking about preparing for you. Okay. Today, So I was thinking um, one of my favorite stories, Carol and I had this mutual client who um, young kid had just turned, I think he had just turned 18. Cause again, I, I work in the music business. So I work with a lot of kids. So he had bought this Jeep, right? And his mom had gotten him this really cheap insurance. And I could have died when I saw what his coverage was. So I was like, not going to work. Um, flipped him over to Carol's office. And because he was so young, they would only allow us to get about 500, I think it was $500,000 in liability coverage. Right, Carol? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, this kid just signs this multi-million dollar deal. He buys this Jeep. Carol, had he had the car for two weeks? Barely, just barely two weeks. Barely two I mean, weeks. Barely two weeks. So y'all, this is a true story. He was hanging out all night with his friends Saturday, fell asleep driving home Sunday morning, drives off the road, drives into somebody's house and pins a woman who was getting ready for church underneath his Jeep. Yeah. Okay. I could have died two deaths that day. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking literally he fell asleep. So he drives across two yards into this house. It was like a split four year house. This woman is getting dressed. She's in the closet, pulling out clothes. He literally pins her in the closet under her, under his Jeep. She breaks her hip. What else was wrong with her, Carol? She broke her hip. Oh my God, her shoulder was messed up. A couple of issues with her neck. It was a mess. Perfect storm. storm. Perfect storm. So thank God we had upgraded him to this half a million dollars of coverage because his little hundred fifty fifty thousand the state minimum that his mother got clearly they would have just threw this kid to death yeah yeah and so we've had that issue we've had a couple of fires together with clients um both of my kids have had car accidents with carol <laughs> i mean the the list had goes on i had a flood i had four and a half feet of water in a house i mean the list just goes on and on and on and on so i'm ultra sensitive to this topic Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I'm ultra sensitive. And so just for humor's sake, sometimes I'll I'll call Carol and like, give me give me your most current story. Um, there's so much life that happens. There's yeah. so much life that happens. So Carol, as we prepare to do this inventory, can you just give us a couple of minutes? People are like, inventory, why have to do that? That's crazy. That's a waste of time. Nobody does that. Why is doing a home or apartment inventory so important? Oh my God, it's one of the most important parts of having your policy information together. When you have a claim, and first of all, it's already a frustrating time, and that claims adjuster is throwing question after question at you saying, okay, give me the receipt for your television that was stolen. Give me the receipt for your toaster oven, your air fryer. Well, the reality of it is once we read the instructions and we plug the little thing in, we're done with it. We don't keep the receipt. We can't remember exactly what we purchased it, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
So the inventory is so important because you realize exactly what you have. It tells you two things. Number one, do I have enough coverage? Number two, how do I prove that I actually owned the item? In this age of having everything digital and easy to do, the inventory is much easier to do than when I started in insurance back in 1988. Now you can just take your cell phone, take some pictures, shout out the serial number, give a description of the item and keep moving forward. Right. But even more so, what you realize is that you do have a lot of stuff. When somebody says, oh, my God, my entire house burned down. How are you going to remember the 16 bath towels that you have, the four packs of king size sheets, the, the cereal bowls, the carpeting in your uh, living room, so forth and so on. So the inventory is your personal diary. It's a it's a property diary of everything that you own. It's so essential to just keeping things intact. Number one, again, to make sure that you have enough coverage. Number two, to be able to prove it whenever you have a claim. Right. And so, Carol, when I hear you say that, I think a lot of people don't realize and what that's what Tiana was talking about. People think, oh, you know, I had a pipe burst at my house and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole first floor flooded. I have hundred thousand dollars in personal contents coverage. That's for all of my stuff. Yes. I'm just going to call State Farm and file the claim. And because I have a hundred thousand dollars in personal contents coverage, they're going to write me a check for a hundred thousand dollars. But it doesn't work that way at all. No, it does not. It does not work that way. What we're saying to you initially is, yeah, you want $100,000 for your contents? Absolutely, we'll give it to you. But what we're also saying in that moment is, you need to show us where this $100,000 fits in your home. And what most people end up realizing is, it's not a round number like $100,000. It's actually more like $109,710.15. Right. So once you start really going over everything and seeing exactly what you have, and what makes your home or your apartment different from your best friend or even your mom? You right. look into in your closet and you say, oh, my God, I go to 10 different uh, weddings a year. These are my special dresses. Somebody else is saying, oh, no, I collect all these Jordan tennis shoes. You know, they can tell us they've got 30 pair, but can they prove how they purchase them? So that's why it becomes so important. And Janai is absolutely right. We're not just going to give you a check for one hundred thousand dollars. We want to mm -hmm. see exactly what you own. You're going to show us by inventory, by receipt, by documentation, exactly what you have. So we will know how to pay you. Right. So tune in with us on Wednesday to learn how to do the inventory. We're literally going to be going through a house on Wednesday, teaching you all how to do that. And then making sure not that you're just going to follow us, but you got to schedule the time to do it yourself, ladies. You're going to have to schedule the time to do it because again, you're going to want to have that proof. So we're certainly going to cover that. So um, if you have any questions about the inventory session, please drop them in the chat. Any questions for Carol, again, please drop it in the chat or you can just take yourself off of mute and um, ask her away. Um, so while people are thinking about their questions, um, let's talk about the policy review session that we've got coming up on the Tuesday, October 19th. And again, ladies, and we need you, I don't care, Progressive, Geico, Allstate, whomever you're with, your homeowners and your auto insurance. We're going to do a review because a lot of times, um, a lot of us are just like, ooh, what do we have to do? Because we're just going to try to get enough coverage <laughs> based on what the state requires. We're thinking about our budget. Nobody likes paying for insurance. You know, like I'm spending all this money for what? Um, just because we simply have to. So, Carol, quickly, car car insurance, what are the top two mistakes people make when it comes to auto coverage? The big one is that they shop on price alone. Um, yes, in, like Janai said, it's an awful thing to have to purchase the policy, but it's one of the things that will most likely save your income. You know, people say, oh, my God, but this car is car insurance is costing me two hundred dollars a month or it's costing me one hundred ninety five dollars a month. How can I get a break? So instead of looking at ways to save money or researching ways to save money, they cut back on the actual protection that they need. So that's the big piece. They cut back on uh, coverage. 
The second thing is not knowing what they have. People mm -hmm. buy just a cookie cutter policy, assuming it's what they need. They right. don't find out what they actually have until they have a claim. Mm -hmm. And then it's too late. Mm -hmm. Then you're backpedaling, trying to figure out how you're going to dig yourself out of this hole. And in most cases, at the time of the claim, it's too late. So the big mistakes, shop by, don't shop by price. Mm -hmm. Understand what it is you really, really need and how that looks for you and for your family. And the next thing understand your policy make your agent tell you everything about your coverage so if there's an opportunity for you to file a claim mm -hmm. you are certain that you have the exact coverages that you need and there are no surprises okay no that's super helpful all right carol i see a question in the chat for you it says when listing your inventory is it only items of value that should be listed Good question. Absolutely. Venetia, that is an important part. But no, you want to list everything. So like Jana said, we will actually be going through a house to make it real for you. It looks like um, your home. So when you walk into your front door, what do you see? Your lamps, your television, your couch, uh, a couple of rugs, some photos, that sort of thing. You want to list everything in that room and kind of video that to make it easy for yourself. Take some pictures. So it's just not the things that are, are of value, like the uh, mink coat that you inherited from your Aunt Rita, but it's everything that you actually own. I know, Venetia, um, I do my home inventory once a year. And again, it's something that I've learned from Carol. Who would think that you need to open up your linen closet and take video of that? You know, I literally walk in my kitchen and I walk in, I open up every single cabinet. Because if I ask you right now, like, how many plates do you have? You don't, you, who knows that? Like, who, who would even think about that? How many sets of sheets do you have? You know, how many pair of shoes do you have? I literally walk through my entire house. I open every drawer. I open every closet. Now I have um, that list that she's talking about. Uh, now, if God forbid my house burnt down to the ground, I can now I can remember exactly what I have in every single room. Mm -hmm. And so I'm also taking video of the serial numbers. When you talk about the more expensive items like the TVs and all that stuff, I'm literally capturing all of that on video. I am not going to write all that stuff down. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The, who, who got the time for that? I'm not going to write it down, but I'll certainly take the pictures and take the video, though. And nobody wants to do it. But once you do it that first time and you really go through your entire home and you start documenting things, right. then the next year when you are checking your inventory, it's not so cumbersome. You think it. Oh, I just purchased a new lamp. So I'm right. going to add that to my living room file or I did purchase a new handbag or I was gifted a new handbag. I'm going to include that. So it's not so hard to do once you do that first inventory. Right. Um, the other thing too, Venetia, that I have learned doing the home inventory, I was underinsured because I had lost sight of how much stuff that I actually had. Like, oh my God, I forgot that we had upgraded certain things. So I actually had to increase my coverage when I did my home inventory. Because now that's one thing Carol taught me, what's the value of each room? Yeah. You, never, you never think about your house that way. Okay, if I had to replace my entire bedroom, when Carol said that, I was like, I never thought about it that way. If I had to replace my whole bedroom, if I had to replace my entire living room, what would that cost me? All right, Crystal Parker says, good evening. Question, I am late. What if I don't have the receipts to most of the items um, you have? Can you prove the value? Crystal, you absolutely can. And that's the real reason for doing the inventory. You're right. When you do that initial inventory, you're not going to know what half the receipts are. 10 or 15 at best, you'll probably find right away. But like Janai said, when you go in your kitchen and you open up your cabinet and you pull out your dinner plate, if you give the brand of that plate, the approximate year that you got it, maybe it was a wedding gift. Uh, this I got this for my wedding. This is Mikasa. Uh, plates, they are white, uh, they are porcelain. You start documenting things from there. So what the insurance adjuster is not going to be unreasonable. They just want to know what you own. Mm -hmm. So what I have in my kitchen, which are actually paper plates, I never cook. So 
would be totally different, Crystal, from your cereal bowls, from your uh, flatware, from the knives that you own, from the Keurig. And see, that's another thing. People will start doing an inventory when they have a claim and they say, I have a Keurig. Well, they make so many of them, so many different styles. Yeah. What you want to do is say, I have a, a 10 cup Cuisinart uh, coffee maker. And I also have a single cup Keurig that I purchased from Target about two years ago. Mm -hmm. It was about $99. So by the time you say that, you take a picture of it and you've got video, you're mm -hmm. proving what you own. Yeah. And from there, the claims adjuster can work with you to establish values for things that you don't have uh, receipts for. Or better yet, you can go to your local Target or Macy's and start saying, okay, this is the brand. Right. This is the style that I have. Now you've got something to compare it to, to assign a value to it. Yeah. One thing, Carol, that you taught me that I do too, when I'm doing my home inventory, I do mine by video, not pictures. I'm talking the whole time. Yes. So I'm like, oh, okay, this living room set, this leather furniture, we got this from Leather Creations about what year we paid X. Like mm -hmm. I'm literally talking the entire time because I don't, listen, I don't have none of that paperwork, y'all. Right. Mm -mm. That's not right. my life is not set up that way. I'm not that organized, but I'm talking the whole time because oh yeah, that's right. We did buy this then, um, and then if I don't remember, at least I do have serial numbers or my TV. I can't remember when I bought it. Oh, this is the 60 inch, you know, Samsung, mm -hmm. blah blah blah, and I can keep going. That helps me just kind of put it together because you think whether it's a fire, whether it's a theft blood, whatever it is. you. My goal is I just want to be made whole and I don't want the people negotiating with me about my stuff after I don't spend all this money on insurance. Absolutely. You definitely want to take the opportunity to record your information so that it becomes your fingerprint, your diary of what you have in your home. And right. like Jenna said, the insurance company wants to pay you what they what they owe you. But you have to tell us how to pay you. So that's why the inventory becomes so important. So again, the first time it's going to be a little tough trying to go through everything. Mm -hmm. But after that, when you pick the anniversary of when you're going to do yours, I do mine around Christmas because that's normally when I get something new. Some mm -hmm. people do them around a birthday. Mm -hmm. Other people do it around some other significant date like tax day. So they are just updating the things that they have. And once it becomes a practice, you will then have a receipt maybe for something that you've purchased when it's a major thing, a television or a new, uh, uh, Alexa box or whatever it is you and then you can snap the picture along with it mm -hmm. the receipt yeah so ladies it's really important you want to not only do it but you want to put it in your calendar to at least update it once a year you got to do it every single year okay so definitely want to make that um part of um you know, normal routine for you. So this is October is all about insurance. So I'm encouraging all of you to get this done in October because, you know, we're here, we're talking about insurance. So let's go ahead and pick October. And then every October moving forward, you know, we as a community will do it. We will update it. So thank you for that. Thank you ladies for your questions. Again, please drop in whatever you want. So again, so for those of you who are tuning in late, we will be with Carol um, Wednesday, October 6th on Instagram though. We're going to be on Instagram live. She's going to teach us how to do the home inventory. So that's going to be amazing and fun. Then we're going to do the policy review. So pull those policies out. So um, Carol, let's talk a minute about personal articles because a lot of folk are like, I got my apartment insurance, my renter's insurance. I have my homeowner's insurance. So although I do have that fur coat that my aunt left me and I do have, um, you know, that pearls that my grandmother gave me or my $10,000 wedding ring, whatever that is. Yes. When do people need personal articles insurance? What is it and when do people need it? Oh, great. So the personal articles policy is an attachment to your renters or your homeowners policy. It's a separate policy and it becomes more personalized for you. So what it is, is a list of those specialty items that you own that maybe the average person does not own. So again, the engagement ring that you got that's valued at $10,000 or a mink 
coat that's valued at $6,520, or even some artwork you may be starting to collect. So what the homeowner's insurance policy and the renter's insurance policy does is it says, okay, Carol Jones wants $50,000 to cover the contents in her home. However, we are going to limit how much we cover for her in jewelry, in furs, in firearms, in art, in collections, in cameras, and in sports equipment. There are a few other tidbits that go along with that, but what you wanna start thinking about is, what do you collect? Some people collect Barbie dolls. They may have hundreds of Barbie dolls still in boxes. Well, that's not normal or average. So in that case, you may have a special policy that guarantees the replacement of items like that in the event of a claim. The same thing with the diamond ring. I'm not a big jewelry person, so I don't have those types of things. But then I collect memorabilia from elections, like when Biden was running, when Kamala Harris was running, I collected those things. So while it may be of no importance to my mom or to my sister, that's a collection that I started to collect for myself. So I want to make sure those types of things are covered. So you can use your insurance agent as a resource to just ask, hey, wait a minute. If my Barbie doll collection is lost in a fire, how is it replaced? And then he or she may tell you, well, we will give you X number of dollars for that based on the personal property that you own. However, if you schedule it on a personal articles policy, we will guarantee the replacement of those types of items. So Carol, I have a Peloton bike. Is that would that be covered under my homeowners or do I need to list that on my personal articles policy? It would actually be covered under your homeowners policy. So okay. that's another thing, too. People sometimes get confused. They're like, oh, my God, I've got one hundred and fifty pair of shoes. Well, we just consider that regular clothing. There has right. to be something really, really significant and special about the item that makes it an exception. Okay. So the Peloton bike is just regular home uh, co uh, home protection, home property. Okay. Okay. Now, if you told me you were collecting uh, Schwinn bikes from 1962 mm -hmm. and you've got a certain number of bikes that are in, in pristine condition, then that could possibly then become a collection and not just a regular household item. Right. So, ladies, um, I ended up having to get personal articles policy. I had an aunt, um, my Aunt Betty... Listen, y'all, she was the baddest chick in the game. She um, <laughs> lived in Chicago and she owned a boutique where she sold high-end fur coats. My aunt was obsessed with furs. Oh, my God. So when she passed away, I got like three of them. I live in Georgia. What, what do I know about furs? So literally, I had to get them valued, appraised, and then I had to get them covered. So that's that was my first experience based on what I inherited. I inherited furs and then I also inherited a bracelet from my mother. I had to get that appraised and then I had to get that listed on my personal articles policy. So um, it's, it's important. So if you've inherited anything or if you know your mom or your aunt, because, you know, that's not unusual as black women, you know, Somebody's got that string of pearls, that fur coat or something of value. You don't want something to happen and that doesn't get covered. So, again, if y'all have any questions, please drop it in the chat. So um, on the 19th, we're going to go over homeowners and apartment insurance. Uh, we'll go over personal articles. Um, here's one of my favorites, Carol. Uh, explain to um, the ladies um, any sort of event policy. Okay. So most of us are always planning something. You know, you're going to have a, a wedding shower for your best friend that's getting married. You've decided that you're going to host it at your home. Mm -hmm. You're not expecting anything to happen. You don't want anything to happen. It's a happy occasion. We're just celebrating. Well, the special events endorsement just gives you a little in insulation. It is a one day policy that you add to your homeowner's insurance that gives you one million dollars and liability protection. So what that means is say for instance, we are having that wedding shower and we are standing on the deck. Well, I stand on the deck all the time, but now it's 20 of us standing on the deck and the deck gives way, it pulls away from the house and everybody goes crashing down. You got broken legs, you've got a bunch of bruises, you've got a broken neck perhaps, or even worse. The worst nightmare comes when you don't have enough coverage under your homeowner's insurance policy. 
what that special events endorsement is, says Carol Jones was hosting an event honoring her girlfriend, Janai. People got hurt. They are now trying to sue. She's got coverage. The cost of it is probably less than $50 for that one day of, of event coverage. But it is one of the most valuable things that you can purchase after you selected a caterer and ordered some invitations, get that endorsement. Make sure that you protect yourself. Yeah. Ladies, I've done that when I've hosted like family reunions, um, graduations, even when I've not had it at my house, but when I've had it at the clubhouse mm -hmm. of my subdivision, I think my policy cost me like $35. Um, I think I'm, I'm again, I'm a little paranoid, but at the clubhouse, there's the pool. There was all those kids. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just want to make sure at like thirty five dollars, a million dollars in coverage. I'm definitely going to go ahead and do that. So that's that's something to think about, too. If you're ever hosting something, um, definitely to have that coverage. I'm sure most of y'all haven't even heard of that type of coverage <laughs> before either. Um, but again, super, super, super cheap. Worth getting, though. Absolutely. Um, any questions, ladies? Venetia, you had one? Yes. Um, just to, to go back, I uh, want to make sure I heard you clearly. You would just add that policy with that extension on like the day of your event that you're going to host. So it's nothing that you just pay for on a monthly basis just to have. Absolutely. So say, for instance, you're going to have a Halloween party and it's going to be on October 31st. So what you would tell your agent is, on October 31st, I'm hosting an event at my house or at my clubhouse. I want to make sure that I have a special events endorsement rider added for that day. So it's going to start at 12.01 a.m. on October 31st, and it goes mm -hmm. to, through midnight. They will ask you questions like how many people, uh, what kind of uh, things will be going on. Like, are you having, you know, like a, a trampoline in the backyard? Are you are you bobbing for apples? That sort of thing. Just so they'll kind of know that it fits what they will ensure and cover. And in most cases, those things would be covered. And so you just pay for that event for that one day. There's no refund on it. You don't say, oh, well, the event ended early. I want to get some of my money back. No, it's one and done. One million dollars, one set price, one day. Okay. Definitely worth having. Yeah. Yeah, And these are all the things, ladies, that we just don't know about. We just yeah. don't know about it. So whether you're hosting or someone else in your family is, um, because um, I have, we've all heard on the news when you hear about um, a, a kid getting hurt, someone drowning, um, that happens all the time. And what's going to happen, the part that we don't hear about on the back end, I guarantee you whenever that happens, someone is always getting sued. Yeah. I can promise you, honey, y'all see all them billboards up with all these lawyers, right? Personal injury. This is the stuff that they're looking for. Absolutely. So it's our responsibility just to insulate ourselves, to protect ourselves. So you do, you want to make sure you have enough coverage because again, you think about how every other commercial, every other billboard is for some lawyer who's trying to get somebody to sue somebody Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Sometimes that somebody else is us. Mm hmm so again, you definitely want to have that coverage. And again, if you have any other questions, again, you can drop them in the chat or take yourself off mute. Um, anything else, um, Carol, you want to highlight? Because we're not going to give y'all all the stuff. You know? <laughs> this is just to kind of tee it up a little bit so you know what we're doing um, on the 6th and on the 19th. But this is really, really important because the cost is so high. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is going to be it's going to be exciting. For the most part, most of us think of insurance as dull and just something that we have to have. I guarantee you as a community, we will learn so much about insurance and you will start to structure your insurance policies where they just fit you. You're not worried about what your next door neighbor has, what your mom had years ago, what your brother's got. You will have something that fits you and you'll feel so good knowing that the policy covers your things, that you're not worried about um, proving what you own, that you feel comfortable with what you have and what you're paying for what you have. So I think it's going to be exciting. I am excited about it and I look forward to working with each of you. Um, the last thing that I want you all to think about, particularly as we prepare for the 19th, if you have any young drivers, 
Um, definitely you want to prepare your questions for any teen drivers, kids in college. Um, if you're trying to save money, definitely want to get some questions prepared and um, related to that. Um, if you have somebody in your household or in your family who has had a ton of tickets or accidents, <laughs> um, whether it's super speeder or whatever else, we certain DUI, we can talk about any of that. Cause you know, we all have somebody in our family who is struggling with some of that. So we can go ahead on and tap into Carol, lean in with Carol and really find out how to handle these situations. Cause you know, we don't know what to do. You know, when, when both of my kids had accidents, um, I'm like, listen, do not call the insurance company. Oh, 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 that's another thing, Carol, that we could talk about if we have time on the 19th. Y'all don't understand when you all are calling after an accident, you're on a recorded line. Like you have got to know exactly what you're supposed to say or what you're not supposed to say. That's one thing I learned from Carol. Answer the question only. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we'll be given like all this extra information. No, 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 no. Answer the question honestly only without all that extra. So I've had to learn you know, when my kids have been in accidents, I'm calling Carol like, okay, what, 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 what do we need to do here? Because I want to make sure that things get handled the right way. Absolutely. Crystal, you had a question? We can't hear you. Uh-uh. Because you're not muted. Can you drop it in the chat, Crystal? Um... I can't hear you. Tiana's looking on our side. If it's not too long, do you mind dropping it in the chat? Because I want to make sure you get an answer. Hey, Crystal, try to say something now. I think for whatever reason, your circle was muted. Sorry about that. Hello, can you hear me now? Now we hear you, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Um, this is real informative. I'm, I'm late, but this is helping me out a lot because about insurances, especially when you mentioned about the car insurance, uh, I'm having an issue. Will y'all go, let's put like this, will y'all go over insurances um, when it's not your fault, but they have, it's like a, for instance, I'll give you a quick example what happened to me. Um, a U-Haul uh, person moving downstairs, U-Haul had hit me and my insurance wants me to pay the deductible to go ahead and pay for everything and they do the refund and they'll refund me the adjustment. Mm -hmm. I said no. So I had to so my question is if they talk about they can't do anything, I'm like, okay, I guess I gotta find me another car insurance, you know, because I think because I keep hearing it say it takes time and da 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 and I know it does, but I got I have not know how do you get information? Do I have to get an attorney or I had to buck up and just pay the deductible because um, that's one of my issues. Well, Crystal, what you are describing is probably what most people don't understand when they file a claim. Your deductible becomes your obligation to your claim. So if your deductible is $250 or $500, what the company is saying is you're going to pay your portion and we're going to pay the difference. However, in your case, what your insurance company is saying to you is we're not saying that you are at fault, mm -hmm. but we are saying that your deductible for collision is for sake of this conversation, $500. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay your $500. We're going to pay the other 2000 to make you whole. So that $2,500 I'm just using um, in terms of having your vehicle repaired, but we are going to go after the people that caused this damage to your car. It does take some time. We have to submit paperwork. We have to get statements back. And then once all is said and done in the perfect world, and in most cases, they're going to get your $500 back and they're going to get their $2,000 back. Your insurance company is made whole, but most importantly, you are made whole. What they are trying to do is trying to ease some of the pain and the hassle of you going to find out who the U-Haul was rented by, who owned, who had the insurance on the U-Haul, that sort of thing. So what they are doing is just doing their part. So the whole thing about a claim, it's always inconvenient. 
It always happens at a bad time. I just paid my rent. I just paid my car note. And now you want me to pay my deductible. Yeah. That is just part of it. But that is one of the things that we will discuss in detail about deductibles, how they are applied, when they apply, and the opportunities in some occasions to get your deductible refunded back to you after a claim is settled. Can you also, will y'all be able to have time to discuss that? They have all the information from the other insurance, from the person who hit me. They got all that. They just haven't went after them. I mean, I, I got the phone number and everything, and I've been calling the other insurance, the other company, and they're not returning my phone calls. Now, so you have other options, but just keep in mind, and I always tell my clients this, even though you're my customer and I want everything to work out quickly and fast, in real life, sometimes it doesn't because, mm -hmm. Crystal, there might be 15 other people in a similar situation that mm -hmm. somebody's situation happened a day before yours. Somebody else has happened two months before yours. So we've got them all lined up. We're working them step by step. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can happen quickly in a week. Sometimes it's six months, nine months, close to a year down the line before everything mm -hmm. is settled. But mm -hmm. the good thing is they have to work on that process for you. I, I would do exactly what you're doing. If you have an agent, encourage your agent to reach out, see where they are in the process. Mm -hmm. Ask them. Send in a written letter that requires somebody to respond back to you and not just leaving a single voicemail waiting on somebody to call you back. Right. I always tell people. It's inconvenience. Mm -hmm. It's an issue. But you take the extra step. Make it better for you that somebody says, oh, my God, Crystal is asking us again. Let me work on hers. Okay. So you just want to think of different ways to make sure that yours stands out and that it gets uh, some action behind it. Oh, thank you. Y'all have helped me a lot on that situation. <laughs> thank you so no, much. That's good. And Carol, you know, that one thing that also makes me think about is that um, Ani, who works with Tiana and I, she says this to me all the time. She's like, Janine, you're the only person I know that has a relationship with your agent. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Y'all, please begin to build a relationship with your agent because you do not want to be just a policy number. So when you call, they're like, oh, my God, it's Crystal. You know what I mean? You need to be talking to your agent at least twice a year so you all have some rapport. You don't treat them like it's just a bill because we only care about our insurance like when something like this happens. Don't nobody even care about it until some random U-Haul hits you and you're parked, you're not even doing anything. Exactly. You want them people to move and take care of you. Oh my God, Crystal called. Let me see what she needs. Build that rapport. Because when you need them, you don't want this runaround. You want to know that they're really working for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's our job. That is exactly what we owe you mm -hmm. as an agent. We owe you the time to explain the process, to tell you what steps to take, to tell you what to expect. And it makes it better for everybody. But my job is to do that on the front end. My job is to say, Crystal, if this happens, this is what you do. This is why. Are you comfortable with this? Is this what you want? And then that way I start learning about what's important to you how you want your policy to be structured. And so when a claim comes, I'm like, oh yeah, Crystal knows what she wants. She knew what she wanted when she selected these coverages. Let me tell her what the steps are going forward. And then that makes it better for you. And it also makes it better for me. I have the comfort in knowing that I have given you exactly what you need. And I haven't just not created some policy just because it was just easy to sell. Thank you so much. No, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up. So ladies, please, Tiana, if you don't mind, will you take another minute and just recap our events for October? Because y'all need to put them in your calendar. Y'all need to get your questions ready. And that way we can really win this month of October because we're going to get all of this stuff done. We're going to get our policy reviews done in October. We're going to get our home inventories done in October. Ladies, we're getting it all done this month. Yes, yes. Okay, so for a quick recap, so on Wednesday, this Wednesday, um, October 6th at 7 p.m. on Instagram Live, that's when we're going to do the home inventory session, prove it, how to show what you own for future in insurance claims. So that will be on Instagram Live at 7 on Wednesday. 
And then on Tuesday, October 19th at 7 p.m., that's when we're going to do the insurance policy review. So definitely want to pull your insurance policies. We're going to be focusing on auto and homeowners and renters insurance. So want to pull those so that you can um, walk through as, as Carol goes through examples of how to understand that policy and update yours accordingly. And then we have a life insurance roundtable that is going to be on Thursday, October 28th to give you an idea of different perspectives of life insurance, but also to teach you of what's available. So those are our sessions related to insurance. And then just a reminder about the other sessions that we're having this month. We are um, going to talk about child custody. That content will be pre-recorded um, featuring Tanya Mitchell Graham that will debut the week of October 18th. And then we will have a live session with Tiffany McKenzie, who is an estate attorney that will be on Thursday. Um, I'm sorry, Wednesday, October 27th at 7 p.m. And that will be about wills and trusts. So those are all for this month. You can also check out in the True Few community. We had a post about what to anticipate this month. So it lays out those dates. You can look in the events tab as well. And then last thing I forgot to mention, um, Janai and Carol were talking about like a home inventory. We do have a checklist. That is available in the community. So if you type in home inventory um, in the search bar, you can find the checklist or you can look in the October topics to see that and our other downloads as well. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a really, um, um, really, really good October download just to help navigate you through, the, through this entire month of October that Tiana has put out there for y'all. So I am so glad that y'all took a few minutes to hang out with us. Carol, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, Tiana. Thank you for leading us and getting us um, geared up and ready for an, another amazing month um, within the Thank Me Later community. So ladies, we will see you on Instagram on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Get ready to learn how to do this home inventory with Carol. Um, and then y'all just need to get ready to do yours right afterwards. After you learn how to do it, we're going to get it done, okay? So yeah, I can't awesome. wait. See thank you all on Wednesday. Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Have a good thank evening. You. Thank you, ladies. Have a great evening. Thank you Have so much. Time. Thank y'all for coming out tonight. Thank you.